Um, so it begins with my doctoral research, which was um, an ethnography of American Christian Zionists, which I completed in 2008. So whereas Elise has been telling us about Jewish Americans um, who go uh, to, to do sort of pro-Palestinian activism, I studied Christian Americans who go to do um, pro-settler and pro-Israeli uh, military activism. Um, <clears throat> and then it goes all the way up through um, a sermon that I preached at Pentecost uh, last year. So you'll see on the side, there's a, just some bullet points of a huge variety of things that I touch on in the book, which I obviously um, could not begin uh, to summarize because it's not that kind of book. So what I want to do is just talk about um, one sort of uh, framing set of concepts and then sort of one snapshot of something specific that's a little bit more um, interfaith. So first of all, what does eschatology have to do with politics? So starting from the beginning, if you're not familiar with the term eschatology, it comes from the Greek word uh, which means last. And very often you hear it defined as doctrines of the last things, meaning what will happen at the end of time or what will happen at the end of each human life. Um, but more broadly, many Christian theologians define it more in terms of uh, the ultimate purposes for humanity and for Earth. And, uh, and so one of the theologians um, that was really formative for me said, uh, we often <coughs> say eschatology is about last things, but eschatology is also about things that last. Um, so what does that have to do with politics? Um, well, if we think about politics um, really broadly in terms of the organizing of peoples and structures through uses of power, um, then when we talk about the relationship between eschatology and politics, what we're talking about is how and whether um, people relate the ordering of our common life um, within human history to belief about what that's all ultimately for at the end of human history or the culmination of human history. So that's a little bit about a framework for talking about eschatology and politics. Um, now one, one thing that I touch on in the book is uh, what Christian eschatology should learn from Jewish apocalyptic. Now apocalyptic is an ancient genre and it was very often used by um, oppressed and marginalized groups as ways of, of having a way to narrate their political experience and also their political hopes. Um, and there are lots of apocalyptic Jewish texts that aren't uh, in uh, canons of scripture, but the main text that's shared by Christian and Jewish scripture is the book of Daniel. So the book of Daniel is set during uh, the Babylonian exile, but it was written much later, probably during a time of persecution in the second century BCE. And so when it's being written, as if it's being written during the time of the Babylonian captivity, it's allowing that persecuted community to sort of reflect on how their ancestors were persecuted and came through. And the way that that is narrated is through Daniel receiving these heavenly visions of a series of geopolitical powers that fall catastrophically. Um, and we tend to think of the word apocalypse in terms of cataclysm, of that, that kind of catastrophe. But that's not what the word means. The word is about being given that vision, that revelation. And so, um, if we, if we think of apocalypse and apocalyptic more in, in that original sense of a vision of what is ultimately true behind the false pretenses that humans make to have absolute power, um, then we can see how this can actually be a really positive resource for relating um, politics and eschatology. But what's gone wrong often in Christian eschatology is looking at those kinds of books and especially putting together specific interpretation, interpretations of Daniel with interpretations of the book of Revelation, and looking at those as chronologies or um, prophecies of what will happen. And that's often where eschatology becomes very dangerous politically. Whereas you can see if it's a sort of unveiling of what's ultimately true beyond people who are currently oppressing others because they believe they have ultimate power, then that's a completely different way of relating eschatology and politics. Thank you.